Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. As we start, just a quick reminder and a, a quick request, request for reflection. Just reminding everyone that la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. That there is no power and no, no, no power and no change of anything, change of heart, change of circumstances, except with Allah, except in Allah. So, I stand here before you as a means, as a sign, but ultimately, if all of you want to learn something today, if we want to hear something from Allah today, then let us set that intention before we begin, inshaAllah. wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiruhu. ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين قال الله في كتابه العزيز بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون في مكان آخر يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما كثيرا وبث منهما كثيرا كثيرا من الرجال والنساء أو كما قال واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا Truly all praise is to Allah All praise belongs to Allah We praise Him as much as we can We seek His help We seek His forgiveness we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves, from the evil of our bad actions. And we testify, we bear witness that there is no God, nothing worthy of worship, nothing worthy of dependence, nothing worthy of anything at all except Allah. He is alone, He has no partner. And we testify that Muhammad ibn Abdullah the peace and prayers of Allah be upon him, his companions, his family, and all those who follow him to the last day, and may Allah count us among them, that he is Allah's final messenger, Allah's final prophet and messenger, and his servant. Allah says words in his beautiful Quran, which can be translated roughly as, O oh, you who believe, O oh, you who have faith, who have iman, Fear Allah. Have consciousness of God as is His right. And die not except in a state of submission to Him. And in another place. O oh mankind, have fear and consciousness of your Lord who created you from one soul. And from that soul created its mate. And from those two sent forth many men and women. And have fear and consciousness of God through whom you ask of your various affairs and the wombs that bore you. Verily, God is ever watchful over you. It's related about our Prophet and Father, Sayyidina Adam, the first Prophet, indeed the first human. It's related that. Of course, he was in Jannah and had everything that he needed, everything he desired, everything he would ever want, could ever imagine of wanting, he had. He and his, and his wife, Hawa, may Allah 
have mercy and peace upon them both. And yet, he took a decision, he was deceived out of that position and forced to, to come down to earth as an order, as a command of Allah. <clears throat> and it's related that when he came down on this earth, he had already seen Jannah, he had experienced Jannah, he had experienced the, the pleasures of heaven and the pleasures of being so close to the presence of Allah. So much so that it's related that when he came down to this world, according to some reports, that he cried for 900 years. 900 years he did nothing but cry. Nothing but cry. And Jibreel alayhi salam, the angel, the archangel, would come to him and every time that he came to Adam, peace be upon him, Adam cried even more because the sight of Jibreel would remind him of what he had and what he had lost. He cried to such an extent that when Jibreel would, came, would come to him and it would increase his crying, it caused Jibreel to, to cry himself. Out of pity of, of seeing the sorrow that this man was in. And it was also Jibreel who taught Adam how to deal with this world. That in Jannah, whenever Adam السلام, wanted something, whenever he wanted food, all he had to do was just reach out and get it. He didn't even have to ask for it. He just had to think, have a desire, and suddenly there it would be in front of him. And yet now he's descended to the level of the world, of the dunya, of the lower world. And Jibreel had to teach him, السلام, may peace be upon him, had to teach him how to deal with his world. That no longer do you just imagine, do you just wish, and it comes to you, but you have to work for it. You have to take the seed, you have to plant it, you put it in the ground, you cover it, you water it, you tend to it, make sure it grows, make sure nothing else stumps it out, nothing else eats that shoot that comes out from the seed. You tend to it, keep watering it, Use a little bit of fertilizer. Then, finally, you can take that seed. Take that grain that comes from the seed. And then, can you eat it? No. Then, you crush it. You crush it. You make a paste. You cook it. And then you can have some bread. SubhanAllah. So much work for something that was, with complete, was completely effortless before. Really. Months, a year's worth of work just for one piece of bread. And it's reported that after Jibreel alayhi salam taught Adam alayhi salam how to make this bread, Adam sat down on the floor to eat it. He sat down on the ground, picked up his loaf of bread that he had put so much effort into doing, into making, raised it up to his hands and dropped it and it rolled down the hill. This is the world. This is the dunya, brothers and sisters. So let's not kid ourselves. Let's not lie to ourselves about the reality of what's going on. The reality is that we are not satisfied. We are not satisfied by anything in this dunya. And it's not fun. And it's not easy. It's tough. SubhanAllah. The effort that we have to put into, compared to the no effort that was ever part of our lives before, when we were just, just fought, when we were just, just gathered into, into the loins of Adam, we still had an existence then, we were with him there in Jannah to a certain extent, not in the way that we have our existence now. But we, we, we know what it's like to be in the presence of Allah, and yet here we are in this world, Let's not kid ourselves. It's reported from Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, that he was comforting one of the other Sahaba one time. And he said, let me tell you about this world. This world is simply just a few things. Just maybe five things in this world. There are things to eat. There are things to drink. There are beasts 
to ride, better things to wear, and there are intimate relations to be had. Five things in this world. He said, now, now take a look, think about these things. As for what we eat, the most enjoyable thing we could eat is honey. And the reality of that is that it's the spit of a little fly. The most pleasurable thing that we can drink is pure water. And the reality of that is that humans and animals and all kinds of creatures on earth, they all drink water. It's nothing special to us. The most pleasurable thing we can ride is a beautiful steed, a beautiful horse. And what do we do with that steed? We ride into battle and kill other people on it. The most pleasurable thing that we can wear is silk. Beautiful, comfortable silk. And what's the reality of that? It is the excrement of a worm. SubhanAllah. And it goes on. And so this is the reality of the world. When we look at the most pleasurable things, the things that, that we try to seek after, that we try to find, that we often try to find tranquility in, let me get the best of this world. The, the best circumstances, the most pleasurable things, the things that will make me feel easiest in this world. The reality of it is it is the complete lowest thing that we can imagine. And the reality of it is that we're lying, ourselves, we're lying to ourselves day in, day out. I know what I want, I just want a little more money. In fact, not just what I want, but what I need. What I need is just a little more money so that I can do just a little more of the things that I like to do. Or just a little more food. Or a little bit of this type of food. Or just a little more beautiful wife. A beautiful husband. To keep me company. In the dark nights. Or just some nice kids. How about that? SubhanAllah, Allah says in the Quran too. Innama i'lamu annama adihi al-hayat al-dunya la'ibun wa lahu وَزِينَةٌ وَتَفَاخُرٌ بَيْنَكُمْ وَتَكَاثُرٌ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ Five levels of dunya. This, he says, he says, no, know for a fact that it is indisputable that this life, this lower life, is nothing but, and he lists five things, but play, amusement, adornment, Pride between you, constantly contesting with other people in terms of what you have, and just amassing children and wealth. That's all the dunya is. That's all that this worldly life is. And so, and so, how often yet do we lie to ourselves thinking that this is what I need? This is what I need. And yet, the more we get, the more we feel like we need. It never satisfies us. It never quite reaches us. Never. Always so depressing. And always so much work to get. That when I finally grasp that, I have to work so much to maintain it. When I have that, that beautiful, nice, big house, I have to make sure that I have the income to be able to sustain the property tax on that house. When I have that beautiful wife, maybe even if we were in a different context, several wives, then I have to make sure to have enough money, enough space, enough resources, enough time to serve them well and take care of them. When I have enough children, enough of all these things, I amass these things which just creates more obligations for me and stresses me out even more. SubhanAllah. So let's just stop lying to ourselves <coughs> and realize what it is that we really need. What it is that our souls cry after. For one, our souls cry after for something better. And so we know that there is something better. And that something is called Jannah. Heaven. May Allah all make us all people of Jannah. Amen. Enter us all into it without any reckoning. And how is Jannah described? SubhanAllah. There are couches in Jannah whose, whose height is the height between the heavens and the earth. And the Sahaba, some of them, when they heard this from the Prophet they said, how can could, how could we get up on it then? What's the point of having a big, huge cushion 
that we can't even jump up on. <laughs> and he said, he said, well, you know how, um, he said, they basically, like the camel does, as the camel comes down for its rider, the rider gets on and then it comes up again. This is the same way that our firash will be. Our, our great cushions, they will come down for us. We will rise and we will rise up to those heights. It's reported that the people of Jannah get beautiful horses. Beautiful horses, especially on Fridays when they can use them to visit their family members in their other gym. As for the food and drink, the food and drink and indeed all of it is completely unimaginable. Far beyond what we experienced here. It resembles slightly what experienced here in such that we would be able to place names on it, but completely does not resemble what's here in that it's completely different experience. SubhanAllah. And the fruit of Jannah, the fruit of heaven, is in such a way that it is always Daniya. It is always close at hand. Whenever we want fruit, it's always there. You just pick it, eat it. Do we have to go to the bathroom? No. Alhamdulillah. And the, the drink of Jannah, of many different kinds, there's milk that doesn't come from a lowly place in a cow. And it never goes bad. Indeed, rivers of milk running, and they never turn sour. Rivers of wine. And it never has any bad effect on us. We get buzzed, we get excited when we drink the wine, but we don't get the headache afterwards. And it's not against the Amr of Allah. It's not as in this world when we can't have intoxicating drinks. The wine is something beautiful that has no bad effects and is not prohibited from us. Rivers of honey. Rivers of honey that, unlike the honey in this world which has to be filtered down, filtered and treated and, and, and processed in order to, to, to really get to, to, to where it's edible and looks good, the, the rivers of honey in general will just run completely free of impurity. Not only that, but all these rivers will run around us so that whenever we go any place in Jannah, they follow us. Run a few miles. Oh look, I can quench my thirst with a bit of honey. Not that we'd have thirst to quench. SubhanAllah. All of this, just everything we could ever imagine and more. What am I Everything. Everything we could possibly imagine. So not only is there going to be in Jannah these things that we get from our tradition, which we've related today, but all the things that we can imagine. I don't know about your Jannah, but my Jannah, if I were to design it, and if Allah is merciful enough to allow me to have just a taste of it, it would be a place where I'd have zero gravity. I could just jump around and fly. I'd have a water park in my Jannah. Such that I take slides around in my Jannah and then go down into the, into the depths of the lake. And then I think, you know what? I wish I could breathe. I wish I could breathe down in the sea and suddenly I'd have gills. And I could breathe. Anything I'd want, it would be there. And that doesn't go under a, against our tradition because it's affirmed in our tradition that anything you could possibly imagine, it will be there. Be there before you can even pronounce it. Before you can even say, Allah, could you please give me this? No. دَعَوَاهُمْ فِيهَا سُبْحَانَكَ اللَّهُمَّ Allah says in the Quran, the, the, the request in Jannah, the people of Jannah, when they make requests, all they say is سُبْحَانَكَ اللَّهُمَّ All they say is, exalted is you, Allah. And then suddenly what they wanted appears in front of them. SubhanAllah. Here is the Jannah. And so for one, let's just stop <coughs> fooling ourselves. And realize that, that, that all of this is not what we want. There's something else. And yet, what we've been given is a deen. A deen. Sometimes we translate deen as religion, but literally in the Arabic, it means transaction, or at least has that kind of connotation. A transaction and a retribution in terms of if we do something in this world, then we get paid for it in the next world. And so this is our transaction, that every single moment we can have this kind of transaction with Allah. That the dunya, this lowly world, comes to us and we convert that lowly world into gender currency. So that person who annoys me, that's in this world. That person at work, 
who I don't really get along with. He and all his annoyance and the tough things that he says to me and the way that I feel about it, all of that, if I just have sabr in that, if I'm just patient in that, I've now turned that dunya circumstance into Jannah currency. When I go to the supermarket and I see all these foods laid out in front of me, plastic packaging, plastic packaging, all these kind of things, packaging, all the, the, the petroleum that we use to take our car, that, to use, that, that got us in our car from our homes or wherever it was to our supermarket, when we really think about it and think that all of this system, it's all based on petroleum, which is based on extracting unjustly the resources of the Muslim Ummah across the world, when we think that and say to Allah, you know, Allah, I'm going to be a little more conscious about what I buy and how I drive and how I live my life. And therefore, maybe I was driving a lot before and I choose to ride my bike once a day. If we just do that for Allah, then we're turning this dunya into akhirah currency. That's the transaction that we want. That's the better transaction indeed. Take whatever's going on here and think, how do I make this about the afterlife? Because if it's all about what's here, that depresses me. And it's never going to satisfy me. May Allah grant us that success to see things in that way and to have that kind of transaction. Seek forgiveness of Allah during this time for truly did these requests. Alhamdulillah, ibad Allah, attaqullah. O servants, slaves, creation of Allah, fear Allah, have consciousness of Him. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusallu ala nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammad, kama sallayka ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim. Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim fil alameen innaka hamidun majid Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad al-fatih lima uqibat wal khatim lima sabab nasir al-haq al-haq wal hadi ila sirat al-mustaqim wa ala alihi harakul abihim al-da'al al-adim Allah tells us, He orders us indeed in the Qur'an to, He says first Himself, He says that God and the angels Send peace and prayers upon the Prophet O oh, you who believe, O oh, you who have faith Send peace and prayers upon him much And so we do Allahumma salli wa sallam alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahabihi And so this is the kind of transaction that we want in this world Turning this dunya into akhirah currency And yet And yet when we think about it Is that really what we want to is that the extent of our aspiration? It's reported. It's reported that there will be certain people in the next life who will be taken to the angels and shown what they have in Jannah. And imagine this, as we, we've mentioned just a few bits of Jannah. Palaces, rivers, all these places and wonderful goods and things and food and and pleasures, all of these things presented to them. Their place in Jannah is shown to them. The angels take them there and say, there you go, this is yours. There are people who will see that and say, that's not what we want. SubhanAllah. There were people who, who see, uh, imagine this, they will see everything that their hearts could ever desire and more. And they will turn back to the angels and say, you brought us to what we didn't, we weren't asking for this. We don't want this. Why? Is the Jannah not created? Is the Jannah still not a created thing? Even though it's everything we could ever imagine and more, ultimately it's still creation. And were we made for creation? Were we made for created things? <laughs> What does God tell us in the Quran? That we created you for nice pleasures? We created you to have some nice drink and food? No. 
and we did not create jinn and mankind except to worship me, except to know me. This is the purpose. This is why we're not satisfied with anything in this world, and indeed why, why many people in the next world will never really be satisfied with Jannah. Even if they get the heights of Jannah, it's because we all have an ibadah-shaped hole in our hearts. We all have an Allah-shaped hole in our hearts, in our very being. We have this hole that can only be filled by one thing, and that is the presence of Allah. And so I stand here to you today, calling first myself, and then the rest of you, to remember that, to never forget that, never forget why we're here, never forget what we want and what we don't want. We don't want creation, especially not this world, but not even the next creation too. No matter how unimaginable and incomparable that will be, we want the Creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala. La ilaha illallah. We want to be in His presence. We want to see Him. We want to be with Him and be with the most beloved of His creation. That is possibly the only creation that we would ever be interested in. The Prophet of Allah, peace and prayers be upon Him. May Allah allow us to know Him, understand Him, and then ultimately be with Him in this world and the next. SubhanAllah. That's what we want. So let's stop fooling ourselves. And the reality of this, brothers and sisters, the reality of this is that if we're serious about this, if this is what we want, we can have it now. We can have it now. Because does not Allah say in the Quran, Wallahu ma'akum ayna ma'akum. Allah is with you wherever you are. Does Allah not say in the Quran, وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُوا إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبَدِ الْوَرِيدِ That we are closer to Him than His jugular vein. قَلْبِ Allah comes between a person and that person's heart. And if we knew Islamic cosmology, we would know that this term, the heart, indeed is our very soul. Indeed it's our very self. So what does that even mean? That Allah is between me and myself? He's right there. He's with us, but we're the ones who've been blinded. We're the ones who blinded ourselves. And this is the ultimate, ultimate power of Allah, subhanAllah, that is said that Ibn Atta'illah, as Sakandari, rahimahullah, he, one of the great sages of our Ummah, has said that this is one of the amazing powers of Allah, that He, who is really the only thing existent, who is really the only thing worthy of saying He exists, He has life, he is indeed the, the only thing worthy of anything. He has veiled us from Him by something that ultimately has no claim to existence with Him at all. SubhanAllah. Why are we fooling ourselves? Wallahu ma'kum aina ma kuntum. Allah is with you wherever you are. If only we can just accept that. That yes, this is the dunya. This is the lower world. The lower world that... As we've said, Allah talks about it. Vain, amusement, gathering up things that don't matter at all. But that's not the only word in our tradition that we call this world. Yes, dunya is a word for this world, but also is ala. And what do we say? 70 times a day at least. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alam. Praise is to Allah. Praise belongs to God, who is who? The Lord of the Alams. And what is the Alam? The Alam in Arabic, it's Ismul Alam. Fa'al. It's a tool. A tool of what? Alam is a tool of ilm. Alam is the tool of knowledge. This world is our tool of knowledge. It's where we get our knowledge. It's how we have our understanding and our understanding of what? Allah. 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 That if we're really serious, if we're honest with ourselves and say, yeah, Allah, all I want is just to, just to understand what it means for you to be with me, for you to, to, to be in my life. I'm the only one blinding myself from you. So please just, just take me away from myself. Take me away from myself and my own delusions. 
that you are absent anywhere else or in any other time or place or even limited by time and place at all. Yeah, Allah. Yeah, Allah. If that's what we want, then He will be near. Because the reality is He is near. He is indeed the only thing near. al qarib SubhanAllah. He is the near. And if that's what we want. And if we just acknowledge that that's what we need. And that's all we ever want. And any time that we think that we want something else, it's really because that thing reminds us of what it was like to be in the presence of Allah. That's the only reason why we're grabbing after these things. If we truly realize that and just say to Allah, all I want is you. No more creation. None of this. I want the creator. Then we'll realize that he's been there the whole time. May Allah not let us forget. May Allah never leave us to ourselves. Alhamdulillah, we are the Lord. Rabbana Atina fi dunya hasana, wa fi al-akhira fi hasana, wa fi al-adhaab al-nam. Ya Allah, give us the best of this life and the best of the next life, and save us from the punishment of the fire. Ya Allah, allow us to realize that the best of this life and the best of the next life is only that which brings us closer to you, Ya Allah. Allow us to realize that that is what we're seeking after. Ya Allah, allow us to seek after that and ask you for it constantly and constantly be in a state of remembrance of you. Ya Allah, please never leave us to ourselves. Ya Allah, come between us and our hearts, Ya Allah. Because you have truly said in your Quran that you come between someone and his heart or her heart. Ya Allah, grant us that station. Never let us forget. Ya Allah, allow us to actualize Islam, Iman, and Ihsan and actualize true ibadah of you. Be true, true committed servants of you and realize that that's why we were created. Ya Allah.